Hello and welcome to another video. In this we're going to be talking about canaries and how it pertains to the software life cycle and, you know, not the bird. <laughs> but uh, we're also going to talk about where the name comes from and one approach to implementing them for something like a web API. Uh, so anyway, let's jump into it. So first we'll talk about where this comes from. Uh, a canary is referred to as a sentinel species. The idea is that uh, miners used to use canaries as an indicator of unsafe conditions, and the canaries would respond to the unsafe conditions before humans would because they're more sensitive to, I believe it was carbon monoxide, uh, but they would use those birds to detect unsafe uh, situations. And this idea also sort of applies to software development. So I'm going to describe a scenario. Uh, why don't we open up paint and we'll describe this. So the idea behind a canary is that you have a particular version of code that's running in your production environment. Let's say we represent it as the blue version here, and maybe we have uh, a line representing our you know, version history here. And so we have a blue version, which is here. And let's say we make some changes, we have features, bug fixes, whatever. Uh, we make another version, and we'll refer to that as version red here. It's not quite the same, whatever. <laughs> Version red here. Now the idea behind a canary is to take some amount of real production traffic and instead run it on this new code version. So for instance, if we took some little slice of our production environment here, uh, often this is like you know one host, two hosts, or you know, less than 5% of your hosts. Uh, but the idea is to run this new version of code before sending it to basically everyone. The idea being here that if this red code version is bad, you know, it has a regression or you know, fails to start up or serves errors to users or something like that, uh, you'll minimize the impact of a bad change. <clears throat> and the, the other idea is hopefully that by deploying to a small subset of hosts, you can identify the problems earlier uh, and then roll back the bad change before affecting everyone. Now, what this might look like in a, uh, let's let's assume for a second that we're in some sort of Kubernetes-like environment. It doesn't have to be Kubernetes. It can be literally anything. Uh, one way that this might get set up is you might have a load balancer, say our, our friend, the load balancer here, and uh, text, please. Thank you. Load balancer. And you might set up your normal deployment. Let's say this is your collection of hosts. And let's say, I don't know, maybe there's maybe there's 100 hosts here or pods or whatever unit you want to talk about here. And they are all going to register, let's say, well, let's actually use the same colors that we had before. So these will be, oh man, this will be our blue hosts here, uh, the original code version. Let's say there's 100 hosts or pods or whatever. It uh, could be any of those. And you'll set up a new deployment, which is a small, small subset of those hosts, let's say here, but in an identical configuration, except for the code version of, these are our red hosts here, and maybe this is like one or one to three hosts. And what your load balancer will do is you'll hook both of these up to the same namespace such that traffic allows uh, the load balancer to round robin to the various code versions and that way you get a small percentage of hosts that are serving the new version rather than the old version uh, then when you do a deployment uh, so let's say we had just rolled out our canary to this this new red version uh, and we're looking at this traffic split at the moment you'll do specific monitoring on these hosts to know whether they're successful or not you can do this whether it's like business metrics, although business metrics on a small subset of hosts is often difficult. Usually you're looking for errors and crashes. Like does does the app start up and does it, you know, <laughs> does it produce errors during normal execution? Uh, and so you might set up your monitoring solution to specifically look the, for the new version. Um, you know, in Sentry, which is where I work, you might set up a Sentry release that is based on your version. And so you'll have uh, more specific alerting and monitoring on this. And that way, if you realize this is a bad version, you can roll it back very quickly to the old code version. So you can go go back to the blue version that we know is good. Um, and if you 
you know, go to Canary and Canary says that it's good, you can also roll that forward to all your other hosts. And so then you end up, during your normal execution, you're gonna have everything at the same version. <clears throat> Uh, but anyway, that's the basic idea behind a canary, is to you know sequester a subset of your work units on a new code version to test whether they're good or not in production. Anyway, hopefully you found this useful. If there are additional things you would like me to explain, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. But thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next one.